Rivers create fascinating patterns of sand and water. How this works is still unknown, but essential for the people who live and work right next to them. Regular floods and rising sea levels make it urgent to study the way rivers influence our ecosystems. Professor Martin Kleinhans is developing a new way to study the changing patterns of rivers. A machine called the metronome can simulate the behavior of rivers and might one day forecast the changing shape of our coastline. I study how river mouths are formed and they have continuously changing patterns of channels and bars. And these are formed by uh, the tidal currents that drag back and forth the sand and the mud. And I want to understand how they form and also possibly to forecast that. The uh, patterns have puzzled scientists for a long time and they try to simulate this in the laboratory by moving the water level, fluctuating the water level up and down like it happens in the sea. However, this caused a lot of problems and I now have tried a different technique. I'm tilting the entire basin to cause tidal currents that go back and forth. We tested this the first time in a small basin and then it really worked. We saw beautiful estuaries form in front of our eyes and also wadden sea-like basins. So this was a really great improvement. To come closer to nature, from a very small pilot to the large scale of nature, we need a larger flume. Mud behaves very different in small scale laboratory settings and in reality. So now we are building a construction that is 20 meters long and 3 meters wide, the metronome. And it's called metronome because it tilts uh, continuously like the tidal currents in nature. By creating a larger tilt than the water surface has in nature, we are compensating for the fact that the water depth is much smaller than in nature. Building the small pilot setup was simple, but for this big setup we needed a collaboration with technicians. We drew the larger scale basin and we also made calculations to be sure that it was stable. Working a setup at this scale has challenges. It needs to be lightweight and it needs to be strong to prevent the bending. And we achieved this by having the same type of structure that we see in a giant water lily, which has ribs uh, that give it strength, ribs on the back of the leaf. Another unique feature is that it has an arched form, so that when it's loaded with water and sand, it will be as straight as a ruler. The waterproof steel is cut with lasers to make a huge kit that will be welded together. The tilting of the flume is controlled by giant electronic pistons that move the flume up and down and can also move the levels of water in the sea up and down, fully controlled by computers. After construction, the metronome is moved to Utrecht University. This is very exciting to see the thing being built. I can't wait to do the experiments. Finally, the metronome is up and running. The first experiments are promising. The first experiments were going quite well. We started with a thin layer of sand with a river, narrow river carved into it. And then we let in the sea and a little bit of river inflow. And then we tilted to create the ebb and flood currents. Within hours, we had channels and bars shifting in the river mouth and a delta, an ebb delta formed that grows into the sea. With cameras on the ceiling, we track the floating plastic particles to measure the velocity of the ebb and flood currents. In reality, these 30 seconds of experiment represent 12 hours of ebb and flood. With the old method of uh, raising and falling sea level, scientists used to get only sand transport very near the coast. But in reality, the tides go much further inland. And by tilting the metronome, we now get these fantastic estuaries that we were hoping for. So, the invention works, and the scientific research can begin, and we're looking forward to the first discoveries.